So I've been making video games for around 10 years now. 10 years! And at the time of making this video, I've worked with many different game engines, created several hundred different Unity projects, participated in 10 game jams and made over 400 videos on the subject. So I'm not exactly new in the game. Pun intended. And I think it's fair to say that I should have learned a few things by now. At least I should. Have I though? You like that locks? So in this video, we'll take a look at my game development journey and see if there's anything we can learn from it. Or you can just laugh at my mistakes. It's up to you. But first, this video is sponsored by Hostinger. During my years in game development, I've often had to set up different web pages for many different purposes. I've even tried programming one from scratch and hosting it on my own. But boy oh boy is that a lot of work. This is why Hostinger is such a great solution for all your web hosting needs. They're extremely fast, very affordable and just so easy to set everything up with. And most important of all, they take care of all the backend for you. With Hostinger you can set up your own domain, get VPS hosting and they even offer cloud hosting plans which is just great for storing game and user data. We have personally set up a website with them and everything just runs very smooth. Get 15% off for all web hosting plans using coupon code BRACKEYS and get a domain included with any premium plan. Simply click the link in the description and get started. Also, we have a really exciting announcement later in this video. So stay tuned, I think you'll really like it. So when I first started out, I was using Blender. Yes, Blender has a game engine and back then it was actually pretty popular in the community. The main reason being that it had a simple visual scripting solution. I made my first games without touching a single line of code, just using this. Here's my very first one. A split screen physics based shooter. I think it's fun to go back and see just how little has actually changed. I'm still in love with rigid body physics and a lot of the games I make now are based around local multiplayer. So after using Blender for a while, I noticed a new interesting engine pop up. It had been around for a while, but was only starting to gain more of a following. I'm of course talking about Unity. So I teamed up with some friends and we decided that together we would make a game using Unity. It was called Awake, an atmosphere based horror platformer similar to that of Limbo, which was new at the time. So we got started creating game design documents, art assets and I was learning Unity following the few tutorials that were available back then. However, despite our best efforts, we didn't get past the first half of the first level. And of course, instead of learning from our mistakes, we drew up an even more complex idea. A game where the player gets to create his own levels and share them with others. The title of the project was Your Game and this time we got further. Our 3D artist created a cool character, I started to get into programming in C-sharp and making icons in Photoshop, we created UI for the game with a bunch of cool assets and overall we felt much more confident. Of course it failed just as hard as the first one, but that wasn't important because we were getting better. In fact, I was feeling confident enough to try and program my own game. So I created Kill Pill, a fast paced FPS that challenges the player to stay alive as long as possible. Shortly after that I followed up with the sequel, Kill Pill Tropic Island. Yes, I misspelled tropical. However, this game had nicer graphics, even though they're overexposed here for some reason, a more condensed map and power-ups. After having spent a lot of time on projects that never got finished, it was incredibly satisfying to see these two games complete. And it taught me my first important lesson. Don't try to make everything perfect in the beginning. You're a beginner. It won't be. Instead, I recommend trying out different things and mixing things up. For me, this helped me figure out what parts of the process I like and what I don't. And this was around the time when I started making videos. I uploaded my first video December 25th, 2012. Hello, welcome to the first tutorial done by Brian. It was the first of many on making a survival game in Unity and holy wow did I improve a lot from making them. And you should think that I'd learned my lesson by now and chosen a project that I could realistically finish. However, even after 37 videos, the game was nowhere near complete and I decided to move on. This time, more determined than ever to finish a project, I created the Make a Game Beginner course, where we would create a ball rolling game. Not the most exciting thing in the world, but I finished it with only 27 videos. Alongside the videos, I worked on a variety of projects. I created a free inventory system and published it on the Unity Asset Store. Later, I made another editor extension for drawing pixel art inside the Unity Editor. It's still on the Asset Store today, but it hasn't been updated in quite a while. But for every project I finished and published in this way, there were at least 10 projects that I scrapped after just a few days or weeks. Some were just quick tests where I would try out a certain feature. I experimented with stop motion, stick figure ragdolls, swarm simulation, voxel terrain generation, RTS style unit movement and even space simulation, just to name a few. And each time I got just a little bit better at a certain task and a lot better at troubleshooting. Other projects were more serious. For example, I created a 2D puzzle platformer called Squixel. 
I was really proud of this project and I actually managed to create quite a few levels. Unfortunately, I lost a huge amount of progress to corrupted project files, which caused me to drop it. Lesson learned, make backups. I also created and finished a top-down shooter called Wave Incoming together with a friend of mine. He made the art and I implemented everything in Unity. The game was simple, but we managed to implement multiple characters, a settings menu and a shop where you could upgrade your character. Some of you might know that I'm a huge fan of Gary's mod and that it's one of the main reasons why I decided to try out game development. That and Warcraft 3 World Editor, of course. And I've never understood why Gary's mod was kind of the only game, if you could call it that, of its kind. So I wanted to try recreating Gary's mod, but with Unity. And I made three attempts at it. First time, I just had a few physics cubes that could be controlled by shooting different projectiles. The second time, I'd learned about UI and modeling. So here you could spawn in different objects, manipulate them around and even put thrusters on them that could be assigned to a keyboard key. The third time, I'd learned a lot more about particle effects, post-processing, lighting and UI. I got just about as far as the first time, but this time at least everything looked much better. And at this point, I felt like trying something else. Have you ever done something really pointless in your life? I have. I tried making a game engine from scratch using C++. And this is how far I got. With this much code! So it's safe to say that most of the projects were not only fairly ambitious, they were also often clones of already existing games. And most of the time I had to create projects that were built as examples to use in the videos, which I couldn't just finish in a weekend. This was the time that I discovered something that changed everything. I participated in Ludum Diary 36, a game jam where you get 48 hours to create a game from scratch, the only goal, to actually finish it. For this jam, I created Diggin, and I had an insane amount of fun. Not only was it incredibly satisfying to complete the game in time with graphics, audio and programming, it was also amazing to see other people play the game afterwards and get feedback and inspiration from other developers. Since then I've participated in a bunch of jams and created anything from stick figure games to racing games to crafting games, games that require teamwork and games that require aim. And talking about game jams, earlier I mentioned that we have an exciting announcement. We are hosting a community game jam. Yay! Woo! Yay! Yay! It's a huge game jam event that will take place over a week at the end of August and the cool thing is that it's not only organized by us, it's something that we're doing together with a bunch of other cool guys. So far Saiku, Blackthorn Prod, Danny and Jabrils are all helping put together this event and will all be participating with the purpose of showing how game development can bring people together across our different sub-communities. So if you are a content creator, I really encourage you to make a video saying that you will be participating in the jam and encouraging others to do the same. We will all be showing our process of working on our entries afterwards and I'm personally really looking forward to seeing how we're each going to be approaching the theme. So regardless of who you are, if you're a content creator or not, if you've ever participated in a jam or not, or if you've even just picked up the hobby, I formally invite you to join us in the community game jam. In fact, Blackthorn Prod has put together a short trailer for the event that I just have to show you. So let's roll the footage. A game jam. Paint until your brush breaks. Dream up ideas so great you'll make people faint. Cold like a maniac until the sky turns black. Sounds and music make it fantastic. Or just focus on having a ton of fun. This jam is organized by some of the top game dev channels on YouTube with the goal of bringing the entire game dev community together. The challenge is to make a whole game in just one week. And it's coming up the last week of August 2019. So if you're interested, make sure to join the jam or just learn more by using the link in the description. Also, it's of course allowed. And in fact, I encourage you to join the jam as a team. And special thanks to the Brackies Discord staff for helping put everything together. And with that said, what have I learned after 10 years of game development? Well, I think it's safe to say that I've worked on a lot of different projects and only managed to finish a few of them. And while that might seem inefficient and frustrating, I don't regret it one bit. Going through all these past projects have made me realize just how much I've learned from them and how proud I am of even the ones that never got past the first level. I think it's pretty common advice in the game dev community to not start out with something too ambitious. And in some regards, I agree with this. It can be incredibly hard to keep scrapping projects because of getting stuck or losing interest. But at the same time, I think it's pretty much unavoidable for beginners to take on too much, simply because it's so hard to grasp what's easy to do and what's not. And personally, whether I ended up scrapping a project or not, I've always gotten better with every one. 
I think the most important thing is that you don't lose interest. Not in a single project, but in game development in general. Because at the end of the day, unless you're really serious about game development and have turned it into a job, it's all about having fun and challenging yourself. Especially when just starting out. And whatever makes you go, ooh, that could be fun to try, I say go for it. No matter if it's something you can realistically finish or not. And if you find yourself having a hard time finishing things, participate in a jam once in a while. It's honestly my favorite part about being a developer, and I just can't recommend it enough. So sign up for the community jam today! No, but seriously, doesn't matter which jam, just try it. And just one other thing. Don't be afraid to ask questions or use Google for answers. Copying other people's code and modifying it is an amazing way to learn, and it's something I've done so incredibly much. In fact, I think that half of being a good programmer is knowing how to Google. And that's pretty much it for this video. Also, I just want to let you know that we will be taking a bit of vacation time over the summer, and so we're skipping the next two videos. Don't worry, we'll of course be back on schedule and motivated as ever before long. Also, don't forget to check out Hostinger for fast web hosting solutions. Simply click the link in the description to get started. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all of the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in June, and a special thanks to Infinity PPR, Dennis Sullivan, Chris, Tyson Konofsky, Shane Cleveland, Faisal Marify, Leo Lisset, Runen, Justin Palmer, Daniel Dusanik, Konstantinos Kirenzas, Naoki Iwasaki, Gregory Pierce, Erasmus, Tim Foldebach, Kiros Vidisky, David Lipka, and Alison the Fierce. You guys rock!